Hey guys, I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you're having a lovely, blessed day. I just want to share with you guys a prophetic word that the Lord spoke to me today. I was actually doing a Bible study and he showed me numbers. He showed me some numbers and he showed them to me twice. So I knew that he was trying to get my attention. So the numbers were 339. And uh, if you see me looking down, I'm just looking at my notes of some things that, you know, I jotted down. And uh, I, I saw these numbers twice, and I knew that he was trying to get my attention. So um, the Lord speaks to us in all kinds of ways, dreams, visions. You know, he can, he can speak to us, however. Um, oftentimes, he will speak to me through dream, dreams and visions. And uh, also, you know, pointing things out in the Word, of course. And... Uh, you know, through numbers. Um, I, I've seen sequences of numbers for several, several years now. And I always look at them in the Strong's Concordance. I have a very, very big, thick Strong's Concordance that was uh, passed down to me through my family. And uh, I always look at everything and go back to the Word. So, number 339 in the Strong's. The Strong's Concordance. In Greek, it means it is A N A K A T H I Z O. Anakathizio. I'm not going to get that right, but that's okay. It means to set up, to sit up, and it says usage I sit up. Like to set up, to sit up. So, then, after um, I wrote that down and everything, I heard the word arise, okay? And that is to sit up, you know, to, to arise, like to arise. And um, he reminded me of the scripture, Ephesians 5.14. I've shared this several times. I'm going to read it in, um, let's see, interlinear. Uh, I'm going to read that first, and then I'm going to read it in another version. And it says, Wherefore he saith, Arouse thyself, thou who art sleeping, and arise out of the dead, and the, and the Christ shall shine upon thee. For what makes everything clear is light. Therefore it is said, Get up, sleeper, and rise from the dead, and the Messiah will shine on you. So 339 means to raise oneself and sit upright, to sit erect, to sit up, to sit up, to set up, to sit up. And I heard him speak, arise. So there were some other scriptures that went along with that, but I'm going to read Ephesians 5, 14 again. It says, awake, O sleeper, and rise, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. What that is talking about is that is saying, it's time to wake up from your slumber. Okay, all those that are sleeping, it's time to wake up from your slumber, arise from the dead, arise from being spiritually blind. It's time to be spiritually awake and Christ will shine on you. The light, the light will shine on you because Jesus is the light, right? He is the light. He is the light of the world. And he will shine on you and he will show you the path, right? His word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. So, and Jesus is the word. So, he will show you. He will, he will lead you and guide you with light in the darkness. And those that are spiritually dead, those that are asleep right now, that have not awoke, that have not woke up, from their slumber, they're still spiritually dead. They're still asleep. They're still walking around, you know, in this in this world thinking that everything's okay and everything's going back to normal. And they are believing the great deception. They are believing and they are being deceived by the things of this world. And I don't have to go into great detail about what the great deception is right now. Most of you guys know. Most of you guys know that the Great Deception has been mandated. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm for censorship. I'm trying to be very, very easy here. But a lot of people are still asleep. 
They have no idea what season and time we're in. They have no idea what is really truly going on. And the fact of the matter is, is that we are in the end days, okay? We're in the last days, the last, last days. Like, Jesus is coming so soon. As we see all of these things approaching, as we see all of these, as the heat is on, right? The heat is on. And so many believers in Christ are being pressured to give into the things of this world. And we need to be steadfast in our faith, we need to put on the full armor of God and stand and stand firm in faith against the deceptions of this world. We need to be fully awake to do that. So today the word is to arise. You need to arise from your sleep. Arise, O heavy sleeper, and Christ will shine upon you. You need to arise from your sleep. I'm going to go now to Luke 7. Let's see, 11, 14, and 15. So let's see. Uh, Luke 7 and 11 says, Soon after, Jesus went to a town called Nan, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the briar they were carrying him on, and the bearers stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up, he rose up, sat up, and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praise God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Right there where it says in 15, the dead man set up, right? He rose from the dead. He was asleep and now he's awake. Okay, so you need to be awake. And it takes one word from Jesus. It takes one touch, one word, and everything changes, right? I am here today to tell you that you need to be awake. If you are not awake, it's crucial. I have been saying for years now, it is time to be awake. Sounding the alarm, prepare, you know, preparing the way for Jesus's return and saying, you need to be ready. You need to be prepared. Your heart needs to be prepared. What do I mean by your heart needs to be repaired? Prepared. Maybe it needs to be repaired too. <laughs> prepared. You need to understand that the only way to heaven, the only way to God, the Father, is through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. God sent his only son to die on the cross for you and for me. It is only in him. It is only in belief in him. And, and it's not just about, you, you can't just say with your mouth that you believe and then your heart be far from him. You know, James 1, 22 through 25 talks about you can't just be a hearer of the word. You have to be a doer of the word. You have to be obedient. You have to be walking in the will and the way of the Lord. You have to be dwelling in the Lord like Psalms 91. He that dwells, he that dwells, right? Under the shadow of his wings. He that dwells. Yes, you have to believe but you also have to live it, guys. You, you, you shouldn't have to go around saying, hi, I'm a Christian. Hi, I'm a Christian. Hi, I'm a Christian. Your life should speak. You don't have to speak words out of your mouth that you are a Christian. Your life, your fruit, what you bear shows forth who you serve. What are you bearing today? What kind of fruit are you bearing today? Are you, are you bearing a false witness? Or are you bearing good fruit, fruit of the Spirit, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, long-suffering, self-control. Are you bearing those things? Is your life speaking to others that you truly treasure and love Jesus with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind? Because like I said, so many people go around and they just say, yes, I'm a Christian. Of course I'm a Christian. 
but then they live however they want to live. They do whatever they want to do and they abuse grace. I am not saying that we're not saved by grace because we are saved by grace. I'm not saying that we're saved by works. I'm not saying that the things that you do as far as when you do a good deed, you're going to be saved. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when you truly believe in Jesus, you're going to do those things naturally because God indwells in you, right? And you walk by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will convict you. You no longer want to do the things that you used to do. You no longer want to um, do anything that that would hinder your relationship with Christ. You want to 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 do the the will of the Father, and you want to you want to be like Him. You want to walk like Him. You want to talk like Him. And when you mess up, you severely you repent because you 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 do a one eighty. You know what I'm saying? Like you. When when you get into temptation or whatever, God always gives you a way out of temptation. You decide to make the right choice because you don't want to. You have a fear of the Lord. And what I mean by that is not in like, oh my gosh, I'm scared of the Lord. It's a, oh my gosh, the awe of God. Like he loves me. He loved me at my worst. I don't deserve his love. I don't deserve what that, you know, that, that Jesus died on the cross for me. I don't deserve that. But he did that anyway because he loves me. And, and I have an awe and wonder about him and a praise of him. And I, and I want to make him proud. I want to do the will of him. And I, I want to share the good news. And, and because, you know, it's like, it's like having a gift that someone gives you and you never open it up. What would be the point of that? I want to give you this free gift. All right. Jesus gives this free gift of salvation we are given it and we are go to go forth and make disciples and tell them and share the good news and proclaim the good news of the gospel, which is, you know, Jesus, that Jesus is the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. John 14 and 6. There's no other way to the Father except through him, period, point blank. You cannot, there, you know, the world tells us there's many ways to heaven and that all religions are going to heaven and that is a lie from the pits of hell. No one else can save you. Only Jesus can save. Set free deliver, heal, all the good stuff. Jesus, the name of J-E-S-U-S. -S, that is it. Period. Point blank. There's no, there's no arguing with that. Like there, there's not in the word. It clearly states it's only through Jesus. There's no other way, but the world is full of deception and the world is full of lies, but it's time for you to arise and to wake up. Oh, heavy sleeper. This this, you know, this boy in Luke 7 was asleep. He was dead. But when Jesus came and said, get up, he said, get up, arise. And he got up and he started talking. So I'm, I want to tell you today that the Lord has impressed on me today that it's time for you to arise. There are things that are heating up and you need to be you need to know the truth. You need to know that there is so much deception out there. You need to know that the world is telling you lies. And that the, you know, 2 Corinthians, I wrote this down this morning in one of my Bible studies because I just, I love how the Lord just brings things to remembrance. You guys, he brings things to remembrance to us. And it's like he just, you know, he pours out things to us. The more and more we study his word, the more and more we, um, and dwell in him, the more and more that we worship, the more and more, you know, that relationship, because it's about a relationship. It's not a religion. It's about a relationship. It is not about rituals and, and, and laws and, and all that kind of stuff. It's a relationship with Christ. You have to have a personal relationship with him. And uh, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14 says, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades, masquerades as an angel of light. He disguises himself as an angel of light. All this deception going on in the world it's making people think that it's from God and it's not. It's deception. And it's because the Satan, he has plans too. And he knows the word better than any of us guys. And he knows that his time is short. He knows that Jesus is coming to receive his bride. He knows the rapture is near and he wants to try to get as many people deceived. So then they don't believe and then they don't go in the rapture. And then they're here for the seven-year tribulation, with it, which is going to be absolutely horrific. We are not in the tribulation, guys, but we are seeing the foreshadowing of the tribulation now. So how, how much longer do we have? 
we don't know, but we keep watching and we keep waiting because we know that soon and very soon we're going to see the king. We know that Jesus is coming. There is no doubt in my mind that Jesus is coming. He is coming. And I have been saying it, like I said, for years. And I'm going to continue to say it until he comes. Um, but the, you know, the enemy masquerades around. He disguises himself as an angel of light. He makes it look like things are for you and they're not for you. Okay, the devil doesn't come to you as something ugly, because if he did, nobody would want it, right? He comes to you as something beautiful. As we know, Satan was beautiful, right? Then he fell from heaven, yada, 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 pure evil. Yes, but you have to understand that that's how he tricks. He's a charmer, you know, like that snake, like a snake. What do they do? Charm, deception, what happened in the garden. It, it's, you know, it's the same. The word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's, you know, Ecclesiastes tells us that there's nothing new under the sun. Everything that is happening is, is, it's just like the beginning. And the word tells us that it's going to be just like the beginning. Number one, you need to be reading your word. And number two, you need to arise. So this is the prophetic word that the Lord gave me, and I know that it's personal to me, but I want to share it because I know that it can be used for somebody else. This is what the Lord spoke to me after giving me these scriptures, after telling me arise, all that. He says, prepare the way of the Lord. Speak what I tell you to speak and go where I tell you to go. Release to them the good news of the poor and pro proclaim to them who will give the freedom, who will give them freedom from their slavery. They no longer have to be blind, deaf, lame, or spiritually dead. Tell them, arise, my beloved. I will shine on you after you wake from your slumber. Then you shall rest in my peace, the peace only I, the Lord, can give. Arise. That is what the Lord spoke to me. Arise. And I'm going to read Luke 7 and 21. And it says, At the very time Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John, John the Baptist, what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Boom. There it is in the word. The exact, the word that God gave me. It's in Luke 14, 4, 18 also, but also in Luke 7. That's where he led me, guys. And this is the word that he gave me. And that it is, it's right there. That Jesus, you know, go back and tell John. The blind have seen. The lame have walked. Those that have leprosy, they've been cleansed. The deaf are, can now hear. The dead are raised. Arise. The spiritually dead and those that were physically dead were raised. But if you are alive today and you are still asleep, it's time to arise and Christ will shine on you. Remember I told you that his word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path and Jesus is the light. He's the light of the world. He was with God in the very beginning. In the beginning right? What does it say in the word? In the beginning. <clears throat> I'm going to read it. I know we can quote it, but it's so much better when we open the word, right? Because I don't want anybody to take my word for it. I want you to read the word yourself. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Right? The Spirit of God, that's the Holy Spirit. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus was there at the beginning. The Holy Spirit was there at the beginning. Three in one. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. So those that are in darkness, how do you receive light? By receiving Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning on the first day. So guys, it's time to arise. Arise, O oh heavy sleeper. 
And also it is time to put on the full armor of God and stand and stand firm. We are all feeling the heat. We're all feeling it. But we should be rejoicing because that just means that Jesus is so near. He is coming to get us. He is coming. Jesus is coming soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. We're going to see the king. We are going to see the king. Guys, I mean, just look, you know, a lot of people have been saying it's like a Red Sea moment. And that is exactly what it's like. God is our rescue story. He's going to rescue us. We don't know how much more we're going to have to endure. We don't know how much more we're going to have to go through. We just keep watching and waiting because the word also tells us to watch and to be prepared and be ready. Let's go to Luke 12 real quick. Like I said, I like to read it from the scriptures. Luke 12 and 35 says, Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose masters find them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch or the night. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come in an hour that you do not expect. And then we know that when we go to 1 Thessalonians, in five, it says that he's not going to come to, he's going to come like a thief in the night, but not to those that are found in the light. Those that are part of the day, right? And we just read about that. So that is those that are believers in Christ. We're not going to be caught off guard because we are watching and we are waiting and we know that our King is coming and it's not going to catch us off guard. He's not going to come to us like a thief. He's not going to come to us like a thief in the night because of the fact that our faith and our trust is in him. 1 Thessalonians 5. Five and three. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so you, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You all are sons of the light and sons of the day. So if you are asleep, you are in darkness. But if you are a son and daughter of Jesus, you are to arise. You are to be awake. You are to be awake. So then you, so then you are not caught off guard. So then you, it's not, he doesn't come like a thief in the night. But if you are asleep and you are going by the things of this world and your hope is in the things of this world, the deception, I don't have to go into detail about that. You guys can read between the lines. Then you're going to, you're going to just keep going on thinking that, oh, things are going to get normal again. I'm going to take this deception and everything's going to be fine. No, nothing's going back to normal. Normal's not coming back, but Jesus is. He's coming back soon and very soon and you need to be ready you need to be prepared i pray that this has spoke to you today i pray um, many blessings over you in the name of jesus and i pray that if you are bound in darkness if you are still asleep that you are awakened in the name of jesus